Good morning, everyone. My name is Andy Howard. I'm a senior applications engineer with uh, Agilent ESOF, and I'm going to talk about uh, simulating envelope tracking. I'll first talk about what problem we're trying to solve via envelope tracking. Then I'll talk about a, a basic block diagram for simulating uh, envelope tracking. I'll discuss uh, the types of amplifier models that we can handle and uh, characterizing the, the power amplifier. And I'll discuss uh, modulation signals a little bit, and then show some preliminary simulations and uh, talk about uh, investigating some non-idealities. This slide is uh, kind of an, an explanation of the problem that we're trying to solve. The red curve is the, the plot of the power added efficiency of a power amplifier versus power delivered to the load. This is a, not a real high efficiency amplifier, but its maximum efficiency occurs at about, say, 28 dBm uh, power delivered to the load. And the, if, if you input to the, sig to the power amplifier a, a modulated signal that has a relatively high peak to average power ratio, one of the, the, the problem is that for a, a good percentage of the time, this is a histogram of the power delivered at the output of the amplifier with this modulated signal applied. And the, the issue with this is that for a good percentage of the time, the, the, the power delivered is well below the, uh, the, the, the peak level. So it's op operating at a, a, a low power added efficiency for, for most of the time. Okay. This is a plot of uh, the, the power added efficiency curve versus power delivered for a power amplifier with the, the drain bias swept as a parameter. In this case, uh, it was swept from one and a half up to six volts. And so this is one and a half volts and this is six volts. What this uh, indicates is that if we have a, a fixed drain bias, and that's that's this curve, the, the, the lowest one. As the, well, if, if we could use, instead of a fixed drain bias, if we could use, if we could adjust the drain bias to, to lower levels uh, as the uh, input signal power level is lower, then we can operate along this curve. We can operate along this curve, the, the higher curve there, and get higher power added efficiency. So it, just in, in basic terms, if, if you have a power amplifier that's biased for, for signals that are like this, a, a high level signals, and your, your signal is small, then you're basically wasting a lot of power. And the idea is that if you can dynamically adjust the, the bias to track the amplitude of the input signal, then you can keep the amplifier operating along this curve uh, of higher uh, power added efficiency. Okay. Next I'll talk a little bit about envelope tracking. This is a, a simple block diagram for simulating envelope tracking. We have a, a modulated input signal. We uh, sample the input signal power and we want to adjust the drain bias up and down as the amplitude or, or, or power of the modulated input signal varies. Now as we are varying the, the amplitude of the or the, the bias on the, the, the PA, the, its gain is going to change. So we're going to be introducing distortion. And a, a method of overcoming this or, or preventing this from happening is applying a, a, a shaping curve. So as we're adjusting the drain bias, we can actually keep the amplifier operating at the same gain level. Or we can have it operate at a constant level of gain compression if we want to maximize power added efficiency. And I'll show how we were able to, to uh, set up simulations and, and uh, achieve this. Okay, next I'm going to talk about the, the types of amplifier models that we can deal with. The simplest case is if you have a, a transistor level amplifier in your in ADS, this is the, the easiest case to deal with. 
you can run harmonic balance simulations on such an amplifier, uh, adjust the, the, the drain bias, look at the characteristics of, of the, the power amplifier, and simulate envelope tracking uh, fairly easily with, with this type of an amplifier. But there, are, there may be cases where you don't have uh, a, a model of the amplifier. Maybe you're a, a, a system integrator or, or you're designing some sort of a system and you're buying an amplifier off the shelf. In that case, you just have the physical amplifier. You can actually measure its X parameters and apply envelope tracking to uh, an X parameter model of, of the PA. And we actually have an example of that in our booth if anybody wants to come see that uh, afterwards. Okay, I, I think it's useful to, well, it, it's useful and necessary to do some characterization of the power amplifier uh, prior to running envelope tracking, and I'll talk about that next. Uh, you can check for memory effects and uh, bandwidth of the amplifier, and I'll show how to attain a constant gain shaping curve and how to attain data for a constant gain compression shaping as well if you prefer to use that approach. This is a test for memory effects. This could be done with a physical amplifier or with a simulation. If you apply a two-tone input signal to an amplifier and you vary the uh, tone spacing, sweep the tone spacing. If the, the intermodulation distortion terms uh, do not re remain equal to each other as you sweep the tone spacing, then that's an indication that your amplifier has memory effects present. This particular design uh, does not have much memory effects. It has a little bit, but the y-axis scale here is very fine, so there, there's not much uh, present in this case. This is a, a different amplifier, which was designed for a, a much narrower bandwidth, and it does definitely have memory effects. So if, if you wanted to use this amplifier, say for a, a five megahertz bandwidth signal, it would introduce a lot of distortion. However, it does work fine for narrow bandwidth signals, say up to say 30 or 50 kilohertz. This is another method of looking at M, uh, memory effects. The, the, it wasn't obvious to me how the, the two-tone uh, simulation or measurement uh, is an indication of memory effects, but I think this is a little bit clearer. If you have two tones, well, if you have a, a, a sinusoid and you apply cosine amplitude modulation to it, you're, you're basically sweeping the amplitude of the signal up and down and changing its phase as well. The output uh, phaser moves in this direction back and forth as a function of time. If you have a, a low rate, a slow rate uh, of modulation, then you might get a response that looks like this. You don't have much, much uh, distortion or much spreading. But if you have a, a, a faster rate of modulation, then we see this hysteresis occurring and spreading as well that shows up on, in the lower plots. And those are an indication of, of uh, memory effects. OK, this is a, a simulation set up for obtaining the uh, gain, constant gain and constant gain compression shaping tables. Uh, we have the, the power amplifier here. This could be an X parameter model or a transistor level model. And we're, we're sweeping the, the um, the available source power, and we're also sweeping the drain bias. And we're going to plot the, the transducer power gain as a function of, of those two parameters. Okay, This is a plot of the uh, transducer power gain versus output power with the, the drain bias swept from one and a half up to six volts. And this is the, the shaping table, and what basically what we're doing is on the x-axis, we have the available source power of, uh, of the input signal. And the, on the y-axis, we have the, the drain bias. And if we, if we pass the signal through this nonlinearity, then we're effectively 
able to maintain and, and keep the amplifier operating at constant gain. And in this case, we've specified 11 dB gain. So let's take one point here. If the input power is available source power is 4 dBm, if we set the gain or set the drain bias to 2 volts, then we're operating on this purple curve here. And that point right there is approximately 15 dBm. So that's 4 plus 11 equals 15. So we keep the gain constant at 15 dBm. OK. This shows where these points are. This curve shows where these points are on the efficiency versus power delivered curve. And we'd like to maximize the efficiency. So this is 11 dB is only slightly in, into compression, so we're not really operating at that high level of, uh, of efficiency. If we change the, the desired gain to, to 10 dB, now we're further into compression. We, the, the shaping table up, is updated automatically. We get uh, efficiency versus power delivered uh, a little bit higher here. But it's, it's easy to, to create these different um, shaping tables and run different simulations using the sh shaping tables. This is from the same simulation. We can also plot the gain compression data. And we can, take a, a, we can generate a shaping table that corresponds to a particular level of gain compression. In this case, uh, I'm taking a, a constant slice through the, the curve on the top there uh, at 2 dB. <clears throat> And this is the shaping table that we obtained from, from that data. It's, it's a little bit less obvious how this one is, is uh, attained, but, but we are able to generate a shaping table that will, will keep us operating at uh, 2 dB gain compression. OK, I'd like to talk a, a little bit about some of the considerations for um, simulation time and the type of, of uh, signals, the test signals to use. If you have a, a complex amplifier model and you also have a complex, and prim primarily I mean long modulated signal, your simulation times could be quite long. And I think that early in the design process, it's better to use short signals, obtain quick results so that you can make modifications to your design. And then later when you, you have, say, a more complete design, change your uh, change your approach a little bit, maybe use a, a more complex, a longer simulation, and get, say, specification compliant results. But we can get uh, a power added efficiency data, AM to AM distortion, AM to PM distortion, uh, ACPR data, uh, from fairly simple and, and short signals. We're able to look at the, the statistics of the, the modulated signals that we're using. Uh, that's, that's shown here in the, the, the lower plot. We're looking at um, uh, peak to average power ratios. Um, uh, this is a, a, a CCDF curve. We can use uh, signals from uh, Ptolemy wireless libraries, uh, INQ baseband data. Uh, we can use signals, from, say, from the Agilent Signal Studio software. If you have uh, time domain data in, in a text file, we could use that as well. For, for simulations. OK, I'll show some uh, preliminary simulations next. This is a, I, I think it's useful to run a simulation with a, a fixed drain bias for comparison. And, and then I'll, I'll show envelope tracking applied afterwards. Uh, this is the, the modulated input signal. and. Simulation results look like this. This is the uh, power added efficiency in, in red versus power delivered on the uh, y x axis. The blue is a histogram of the, uh, the, the modulated uh, output signal. And it shows that we're, we're really operating well below the, the peak of the, the power added efficiency curve uh, most of the time. And this shows the AM to AM distortion and the AM to PM distortion. This is a schematic for applying envelope tracking. And it looks complicated, but in fact, it's, it's 
fairly simple. All of this, uh, all the components on, in the upper part of the schematic are just for uh, detecting the available source power at the input. And we, we measure the available source power at the, uh, at the, from the input modulated signal as a function of time and then read out that data. Well, we, we, we use that as an index into the, the, a, a data file which contains the shaping table data. And, and then we apply, we, we read out the appropriate drain bias to, to apply to the, the, uh, the power amplifier. This shows a comparison of the data with uh, constant 11 dB gain in blue, the envelope tracking applied, and in red is with a fixed drain bias applied. There's a, about, a, about a, a 10 to 15 percentage points improvement in power added efficiency with envelope tracking applied. Uh, there's a, a reduction in uh, AM to AM distortion. We're able to keep the, the PA at a, approximately 11 dB uh, gain. And this shows an improvement in the power added efficiency as well as uh, the change in the error vector magnitude and the, the output power. So the, for these case, in, in this case, both, in both cases, the output power is approximately uh, plus 20 dBm. Um, I'm not showing it here, but we can also plot things like ACPR. If you have the, if you have Ptolemy and you have uh, the VSA sync in Ptolemy, you can plot data from your simulations using the VSA uh, software. And this allows you to, to look at data using the same look and feel as you would use with uh, your actual measurements. Okay, what I've shown so far has been an ideal case where we've used an ideal modulator. You can replace that ideal modulator with a transistor level circuit or some other behavioral model for your modulator. Um, I'm not going to show that today, but it's something you could do. Instead, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some non-idealities in the modulator, and that's what I'm showing here. The, the, the first case is with, uh, what I'm showing the effect of having a, a finite slew rate in the bias modulator, and I'm modeling this with an op amp. So this is, the blue is the ideal modulation, bias modulation signal, and the red is the red ones are with a finite slew rate applied, and this shows how the EVM uh, gets worse. Well, as the, the slew rate gets, the slew rate limit gets lower, the EVM gets worse, and this shows how some of the AM to AM distortion uh, appears. This is, this shows the effect of uh, a time delay difference between the RF input signal and the bias modulation signal, and this shows how the EVM versus time delay uh, delta, how the EVM gets worse. And I, I also have simulations that show the effect of uh, limiting the, the bandwidth of the, the bias modulation signal. And these can, can be downloaded from our external website, from our knowledge center. Okay, I think I've shown that uh, ADS is well suited for uh, modeling power amplifiers, uh, investigating power amplifier performance, generating and simulating modulated signals, investigating envelope tracking schemes, and uh, modeling various non-idealities. For more information, we have various links uh, where you can download these, these examples or you can contact me directly, uh, send me an email, and I will uh, help you out with these simulations.